Live from Studio G in the heart of America, I'm Steve Gerber saying the things you wish you could every single day, fighting for you from the Fox Hall of Freedom, defending this great nation. This is the Steve Gerber Show. Here are three big things you need to know right now to start your day. Number one, the first major narco sub of 2024 caught and confiscated over 1,750 pounds of cocaine. $27 million on, on board. Number two, Ohio has now made it illegal to perform life-altering surgeries or give powerful drugs to kids to pursue an alternate gender and ban boys from competing as girls in sports, too. What a day. And number three, reckless and dangerous policies from the Biden administration, lawsuits flying back and forth, and a narrow Supreme Court decision this week have brought America as close to a constitutional crisis as I've seen in my lifetime. With unprecedented numbers of illegals flooding into the country after Joe Biden dismantled our border security with more than 90 executive orders, the nation and its people have reached the breaking point. So along the way, Arizona and Texas tried to stem the flow, which is officially more than 8 million illegals over the border just since Joe Biden took office. When Arizona put up steel shipping containers to slow the flow of illegals, the Biden administration sued and forced them to be removed. The election of a left-wing governor in 2022 in Arizona would not keep fighting, but would keep the floodgates open. But in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott was not going to take the ongoing flood of illegals lying down. He intended to fight alongside his firebrand attorney general, Ken Paxton. They kept working to shut the border down and protect the Lone Star State from further devastation. Governor Abbott began shipping illegals by the bus load and the plane load to dark blue cities like New York and Chicago. Those cities began howling quickly and screaming that the Texas governor was playing political games with people's lives, when in fact, he was just sharing the wealth. He was just sharing the wealth of millions of people in the country with no job, no house, no food, no future. With the very people he claimed, well, they claimed, they wanted them. Because they declared their cities sanctuary cities. As 2021 moved into 2022 and the numbers of those crossing illegally continued to climb, people began to take notice. But, but the Secretary of Homeland Security, as you know, Alejandro Mayorkas, was more than happy to sit in front of Congress and lie time and time again about the border being secure when it was not. So Texas began to build some wall sections in some areas, but that was shut down too. More recently, they placed giant rubber balls and razor wire barriers in the middle of the Rio Grande River in an attempt to slow the invasion and stop what had obviously become far worse and had grown far beyond a problem for Texas into a national security crisis. Once again, once again, the Biden administration defended its open border policies in court and had those barriers removed. Why? And during the entire year of 2023, new records for daily encounters with illegals, well, they were set every day, every month and eventually annual records of illegals coming into America were broken, unchecked, unvetted, unleashed in our nation. Almost 2 million in 2021, 2.8 million in 2022, and 3.2 million just last year for a total of 8 million illegals. And those are just the ones the Biden administration admits to. The number could easily be twice as high. So in September, Governor Abbott declared an invasion under Article 4, Section 4 of the United States Constitution. That section clearly states that the federal government shall protect each state from invasion. And despite this obvious clarity, the feds didn't care and kept stopping the efforts from the governor at every turn. Then a couple of weeks ago, the Texas National Guard seized a park in Eagle Pass, Texas. It was one of the big crossing points where they were flooding in by the thousands. So Texas and the National Guard seized the park, kicked all the federal agents out. The Biden administration was outraged, took the matter straight to the Supreme Court. And in an unbelievable ruling earlier this week, the high court sided with Joe Biden and his reckless, destructive, open border policies, 5-4, led by John Roberts. But if you thought that would be the end of it, you were wrong. Not only has Texas refused to leave the park, they've sent National Guard reinforcements to put up more barriers along the disputed two and a half mile stretch of the Rio Grande and the border with Mexico. Which brings us to this constitutional crisis. The Supreme Court has ruled and ruled in favor of the administration. And Texas, its governor and its attorney general do not seem to care. Instead of backing off and allowing the invasion to continue full speed in Eagle Pass, 
They're standing their ground. They're reinforcing, bringing in more wire, more barriers, more fencing. And yesterday, Governor Abbott released a statement accusing the United States of violating the Constitution and breaking the compact between the states. This is serious stuff, people. You really need to be paying attention to what's going on here. It's serious stuff. Abbott wrote in part, The executive branch of the United States has a constitutional duty to enforce federal laws protecting the states, including immigration laws, on the books right now. He's right about that. Governor Abbott further outlined that President Biden has violated his oath to execute immigration laws and instructing his agencies to violate federal law, wasting taxpayer dollars to destroy the right of the state to remain protected from an illegal invasion, and so much more. It's all in the letter that I have here. Not only does Governor Abbott cite the U.S. Constitution and its guarantees against invasion, he also cites the Texas Constitution and the authority given to protect itself. You see, if states had not been given the right to protect themselves, nobody would have ever signed on to the Constitution. Nobody ever would have ratified the Constitution if states didn't have the right to protect themselves against an invasion like we're seeing. So far, Greg Abbott is not moving, but how long can the governor stand? And what will Joe Biden and his administration do? What happens next? That's the real question here. Will Biden and his ailing Secretary of Defense try to federalize the Texas National Guard? Will federal troops march on Texas? It's happened before. Dwight Eisenhower took control of the National Guard to integrate schools in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1957. But Joe Biden ain't like Ike. Eisenhower led the Allied victory over Germany in World War II. He had a lot of respect. And what about the political ramifications? The border has become the number one issue for voters, that according, that according to several recent polls. The border crisis is a major disaster for Joe Biden and the Democrats, all the Democrats. He's not doing this in a vacuum. This lies at the feet of Democrats who think this is okay. So seriously, federal troops marching on Texas to rip down border barriers to allow the continued invasion by millions of people into this country with no regard at all for our citizens and our national sovereignty. I'm pretty sure that won't sell on the evening news, not even on MSNBC. So, do they let Texas rule the roost? You can't let that happen because then every state will feel empowered to do that. Or is this all part of a bigger plan? Was this already gamed out? I want you to think about that point, because I'm going to continue with that after the break. I want you to, is this part of the plan? Let Texas defy the Supreme Court. Let the Texas National Guard continue to protect that state from the invasion. There's a reason that could be real. There's a reason that could be real. I'll explain it coming up, but this constitutional crisis is very real and very serious. We'll continue after the break. 